Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life, and hi. I feel like it's been forever since I sat behind the, ch the camera, which is not really true, because I filmed a book haul video at the beginning of the week, which I have yet to have time to edit and get posted. So, anyway. I have had a crazy first two weeks of July, which means that I have only read one book in that entire time period. So I thought I would just sit down and do a recent and current reads video and try to get myself organized for the rest of July because I really do want to get some stuff completed this month. <laughs> so the only book that I've finished so far this month is an audiobook, and that is The Lady from the Black Lagoon. Um, by Mallory O'Meara. And this is a nonfiction um, book about Millicent Patrick, who was the woman who created the creature from the Black Lagoon. She is, I believe, the only woman, um, that, or like the first woman that was ever, um, could be uh, documented as having created one of the big movie monsters. And she had an absolutely fascinating life. And Mallory O'Meara does a great job telling her story as well as sort of weaving in her own story and her own journey as a, a person involved in making movies and um, involved in sort of media development type things. She um, really has a sense of humor and a really great sense of timing. Um, and myself, I've never been interested in sort of how movies are made or how um, creatures are developed or special effects or animation or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but Mallory O'Meara does a fantastic job of telling the story of this person's life. Um, Millicent Patrick, who went by many different names over the course of her lifetime, was born um, early in the 1900s. I think she was born, she was born in like 19, oh gosh, I'm gonna forget what, she was born, I can't remember exactly when she was born, but she, of course, The Creature from the Black Lagoon came out in the 50s and she was in her 20s at that time when that, when she developed that monster. So, um, very interesting time period in American history. Um, interesting person. Mallory O'Meara does a great job uh, weaving in um, sort of background about women in these kind of jobs, like pretty much any field actually. I don't know of any fields where women, um, except maybe teaching and nursing, where women aren't actively um, held out of those jobs by men especially over time, but even today, um, male dominated fields where they, that it is really an old boys club and they really don't want women to be participating in those fields. And Mallory O'Meara weaves in that and the Me Too movement and all about how women are held back and held out of career paths simply because of their sex. Um, fascinating, fascinating a book. So if you like narrative nonfiction with a feminist twist and you're interested in sort of um, the time period in Hollywood when the sort of B-horror movies were being created or any of that kind of stuff, I think you would find this book fascinating. And even a person like me who's not interested in movie making at all um, found this a really, really interesting book. And it's great on audio. It's read by the author herself. So that's the only thing I've completed so far in this month. I am currently listening to on audiobook, uh, The Life and Times of the Thunderbolt Kid by Bill Bryson. This is a memoir of his life growing up in um, the Midwest, in Iowa, in the United States during the, he was born in 1951. So it's all about growing up in the 50s and um, his whole childhood. So lots of stuff about what candy was popular then, what movies were popular then, what toys were popular then, how kids... Uh, roam the neighborhood with very little supervision, all that sort of old-timey nostalgia, U.S. Um, childhood growing up topics. Bill Bryson, of course, being the grumpy old man that he is, is pretty hilarious. He narrates this himself. Um, fun audiobook. I'm about halfway through it and enjoying it. I am also reading this tome. This is Barkskins by Annie Prue. This book I'm buddy reading with Natalie from My Reading Days. And this is historical fiction set in um, what is now Canada and New England so far. Um, we're following, this is basically historical nonfiction which takes place over decades. And the story starts out with two main characters, two threads, 
um, of two indentured servants who come from France to what is New France or will become Canada um, in due time. And uh, they are indentured to a... Um, a man who's basically a, a woodcutter. He's a, he's a landowner and he's clearing the forest and these two are indentured servants to him. And uh, very early on in the narrative, um, one character, Rene, stays and, and completes his indentured servitude. And the other character, um, whose name I just completely blanked on, Duquette. <laughs> Duquette runs away and starts a new life in the wilderness. So this is a f really fascinating book about, um, you know, following these two characters. And then as we go on, it's going to follow their descendants over time. It reminds me in setup, the, in format, the same way um, as Homegoing by Yaa Jassy did. Although this is clearly <laughs> a much longer narrative than uh, yeah, Jesse's book did, but it has it follows the same format where you follow the descendants of two main characters over time. Um, there's some great nature writing about the forests at that time in North America. Uh, there's heartbreaking writing about Native Americans and First Nations people um, and what uh, Europeans do to those populations as they, um, you know, try to exploit the natural resources and exploit. Um, gaining control over this country. Uh, I am on, I'm about, can't remember what page I'm on, two, about around page 200, um, and finished the first three parts, basically, and I'm getting ready to start part four. Really, really loving this book so far. So, um, I've also been making my way through um, These Truths by Jill Lepore. This is a uh, nonfiction book of Dell's a history of the United States uh, over the whole um, history of the United States since our founding. I am on page 500, so I am up into starting to get into the civil rights era of time in the U.S. history. Um, maybe, am I that far along? No, I'm sorry. I'm into like World War II era. I haven't quite made it to civil rights era part of U.S. history. This is really fascinating because um, Jill Lepore is doing a great job of bringing in uh, lots of parts of United States history which aren't often taught in schools or at least weren't taught in schools when I, I can put this down, this is not very interesting to look at, which aren't often taught in, in weren't often taught in schools when I was a kid about, you know, um, slaves and um, people who descended from slaves and how all of, basically all of, U.S. everything, our economy, our political structure, our culture was based on the fact that um, these colonists that came to the United States built their empire on the backs of unpaid labor of people that they held in slavery um, and how that's impacted throughout the years every aspect of the United States. Um, so it's really fascinating. It's a really interesting lens through which to tell the story of our history uh, And I would highly recommend it and I'm really really enjoying it I've also started this book. This is when I was Puerto Rican by Esmeralda Santiago This is a memoir um, written about uh, Santiago's time growing up in Puerto Rico um, And you start out. I think she's only like I can't remember, seven years old, um, to a very poor family in Puerto Rico in the rural parts of Puerto Rico. And it really details her whole life, you know. It's kind of like, um, <laughs> it's a different narrative, obviously, but it reminds me a lot of Laura Ingalls Wilder books because it's a, it's a family story of this f close family growing up in, in a lot of poverty and a basically in a dirt full of shack when they start out. Uh, you know, there's um, hunger and a dad that doesn't stick around every day. He goes off to supposedly work, although whether or not he's truly working all the time, you know, we find out maybe isn't always the case. Um, I am buddy reading this with a group that's being put together by Alba over at Siriella. I am loving this so far. This is, I've read the first five chapters this is a five, if this keeps on the way it's going, this is going to be like a five star plus read for me. Beautiful language, super interesting um, 
point of view that I've never read before. Love learning about Puerto Rico and what it was like to grow up in Puerto Rico. Love Esmeralda as a character. She is got such a will and such a mind of her own and she is uh, she's a fascinating character to watch grow up. Um, the descriptions of the flowers and the landscape of Puerto Rico I'm just absolutely loving. It's so beautiful. So I can't can't recommend this one enough. Please grab that if you haven't and uh, and check it out. It's really awesome. I'm continuing to read the essays in The Good Immigrant, edited by Nikesh Shukla and Chimene Suleiman. The this is a collection of essays um, written by different authors, all about the immigrant experience in the United States. Um, I've spoken about this a couple of times in different. Uh, um, videos that I've done recently. I am only, I've only read like the first four or five um, essays in this so far, but I'm very much enjoying it and, and I'm I want to finish that this, this month as well. I have all of these books on the go and I just want to get some of this stuff um, wrapped up and finished in the month of July. So I'm just going to show you everything and try to hold myself accountable um, for the end of the month. The other thing I'm still working on, uh, this has been around for a couple of months. This is the 2018 Best American Short Stories, edited by Roxane Gay. I am on page 100 on this, um, and I, I'm really bad with short stories in that I want to like read them slowly over time, but I read one, and then I put it down to pick something else, and then I just never go back. And it's not that I don't enjoy them, I just like forget that I'm reading them or something, so I've got to make a better effort to like keep myself on track with um, actually picking this up once in a while and reading through a story or two. And then I picked up just today a book that I started way back in April or May. I can't even remember. This is um, a graphic novel, Rolling Blackouts, Dispatches from Turkey, Turkey, Syria, and Iraq by Sarah Glidden. And I think my problem with this graphic novel is I started it and I read like the first 30 pages. It starts off really slowly. I thought this was going to be a journalist account of her experiences in um, these countries, Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. Basically, so I could learn more about Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. And this is more about journalism and how journalism is conducted in today's day and age in um, digital media environment. We're following basically four main characters in the story being told. Sarah Glidden is the cartoonist and she's the one writing this graphic novel. Um, but she's traveling with two friends who are um, journalists plus um, a man who was a soldier during the Iraq war who was going back to the region for the first time. And they're going to be documenting the sold the ex soldiers' reactions and responses to being back in this region um, for a digital media piece that they're writing. So there's a, a woman who's the journalist. She's doing the interviews and sort of writing the articles, and a photographer, videographer who's recording the imagery that's going to go with the article, and then the soldier, and then Sarah Glidden, who's capturing the whole process of creating this journalism um, for, and she's going to write it up in a graphic novel. Uh, so it's, it's a lot more about journalism and a lot less specifically about um, the culture and um, sort of day-to-day -day life in the region, although you do get a little bit of that. So I guess I just had to adjust my expectation of what this book was going to be. I just sat down this afternoon and read the next 70 pages of it, and so I'm on page 100 now, and I think it's going to be a fairly quick book to get through if I just sit down and work my way through it. And then the only other thing that I haven't actually started, well, I haven't, there's two more books that I haven't actually started. One is the last book I need to read for the BookTube prize, and I'm not going to talk about that one at all, but that one um, I finally, finally just got a hold of on audio from Scribd. Um, it's just not been available. I've been trying to get it through my library. I've been trying to do all these things, and I've finally gotten a copy of it, so I'm going to be starting that. And then I went to my local library, and my librarian says, you know, we just got a book that I think you're going to like. Um, it's by Miriam Taves. I'm like, oh, is it women talking? She's like, no, it's not women talking. It's all my puny sorrows. 
And I was like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> I've been wanting to read All My Puny Sorrows ever since I read Women Talking. And she just thought of me. She had no idea I wanted to read it. I hadn't requested it at all. She just said, thought it sounded like a book that I would like. So she grabbed it and um, made sure that she told me about it when I came to the library. So of course, I picked that one up immediately and I will be working this one in as well into my reading rotation. So that's a lot. I have a lot on the go, but like I said, I wanna focus for the rest of the month of July on trying to finish these books up that I already have on the go and getting um, a clean slate ready for August. Um, I am going to include here at the end of the video some clips that I've been taking over the last week of some places I've been along the coast of Maine and I thought you guys would um, enjoy seeing some of the scenery on the coast of Maine here in the summertime. So I hope you enjoy those clips um, and I hope you have found some great books to read and I will talk with you later. Mm -hmm.